What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 news and updates. And so firstly today, Bungie offer a handful of different updates. They talk about plans for PvP special ammo, and they provide some clarification about the future of brave weapons in the game. Plus, they give a hint that we may see a future weapon nerf for a popular grenade launcher combo. So we'll round up everything we know about that, but also we have a world's first solo completion of Legend Onslaught Wave 50. That's pretty wild. We'll talk about other new secrets in the exotic mission, and Destiny to soaring player numbers right now. Plus, we have a few other updates, bits of clarification, and things worth keeping in mind. So, as always, guys, I hope you find the video useful. If you do, definitely get subscribed so I can keep you posted with more Destiny content. But without further delay, let's get into it. And firstly, the Destiny 2 team talk a little bit about PvP special ammo, and they say we've seen plenty of feedback and data on PvP special ammo economy as we've tried various options over the past couple of seasons, with the goal of designing a more robust ammo system for a future season. And they go on to say we want to stress that finding the right system is an ongoing effort. Trial special ammo distribution will use crates again this weekend, and that's in reference to the trials that's just passed, but they say fewer overall crates will be available, and beginning next week, trials will return to the ammo meter system. So in a way, at least, that's a back-to-back -back contrast right there, and players will be able to compare what's happened this past weekend with the player experience in general on the next trials, but Bungie finally say we'll keep working on refinements around special ammo economy and, in the meantime, we appreciate all feedback. So give us your current experiences of special ammo in PvP, but keep in mind it will be switching up for trials this weekend. And so again, it will be a good point of comparison, but let us know your thoughts in the comment section. On the subject of Into the Light content though, the Destiny 2 team do clarify that all 12 base brave weapons will still be able to be farmed after Into the Light concludes, but they have previously clarified that the limited edition variants of the weapons won't drop anymore, so it'll just be the basic versions. And as for Onslaught, they've added they'll be moving Onslaught over to a dedicated node in Vanguard Ops with the launch of the final shape, at which point you'll also be able to enhance the perks on all of these weapons. So it's good to know that the weapons will drop in some capacity, and also that Onslaught will remain in the game because there has been a discussion about content going away, especially over the past couple of days, but Onslaught itself will be sticking around. And with that being in Vanguard Ops, I guess it will also be a future opportunity to reprise other weapons or update the loot pool for it. So let us know what you think about that down below. Another mention for this new content though, related to this week, and Midnight Coup as well as the Mountaintop have dropped, but Bungie clarifies something about the Midnight Ride quest, and they say it incorrectly states that one of the available objectives is to defeat Guardians using hand cannons. However, this objective can be completed by getting hand cannon kills in raids and dungeons. So a bit of clarity there for anyone who's been trying to get it done in PvP. Kind of annoying that it says the wrong thing. I actually booted up Grasp of Avarice to work on this quest, and I was surprised after one run that I'd managed to get 25% of the Guardian kills, so I knew something was up there, but at least we have some clarification. Otherwise, let us know if you've managed to pick up some nice rolls on the weapons this week. I do have a video that breaks down all of their perks as well, so you can check that out if you want to. Next week though, on April 23rd, we'll get Hammerhead and Forbearance. I'm probably most excited for Hammerhead, although there are some interesting new rolls on Forbearance as well. Plus we'll get the Enlightened Action upgrade for Whisper of the Worm, and then the following week we get Blast Furnace and Luna's Howl, as well as the final Iron Banner for Season of the Wish. And Related to Iron Banner, Bungie have increased the drop rates for Tusk of the Boar and the Multimax CCX for players that haven't acquired them yet, so if you're still working on getting good drops of those, just keep in mind there will be more opportunities to do so when Iron Banner returns for the final time in the season. Up next though, there's been a lot of conversation about grenade launchers with things like Cascade Point and Bait and Switch. It's certainly a role that players have been interested in going after on things like Edge Transit, but the community have also speculated that this will possibly be nerfed in the future, and the Destiny 2 team said, we've seen this discussion and we wanted to let you know that we're currently evaluating the interactions of this combo, and while we don't have a specific change currently planned, we did want to give a heads up before anyone grinded too hard for this rare perk combo that it is likely to be altered in the future. So a strong indication right there that specific pairings of things like Envious Assassin or Cascade Point and Baden Switch, while very synergistic, of course it's very strong as well, and Bungie have said they are currently looking at it and that it's likely to be nerfed in the future to some degree. So something to keep in mind right there if you are grinding like a maniac to try and get that specific role, it may be worth leaning into other possibilities. Of course nothing is guaranteed, but the fact Bungie have mentioned this probably means that something's in the pipeline, but they're just not ready to talk about it specifically yet. So let us know your thoughts about that in the comment section, and I figured it was worth pointing out. 
On to a final few bits right here though, and firstly, Destiny Bulletin shared that the world's first solo legend onslaught wave 50 boss has been completed, so the fact that someone could run to wave 50 and defeat the boss while entirely solo is certainly pretty wild. Safe to say it required a bit of cheese at the final boss, and to be fair, this is something that pretty much entirely isn't meant to be able to be done, so it's still an absolutely crazy gameplay feat, even with a little bit of cheese going on. So share your thoughts about that. On the subject of onslaught though, Players have also recently discovered that ADU batteries will also heal allies and enemies. So if you hit an ally or an enemy with an ADU battery, it actually has a healing effect, which is interesting. Obviously, in some situations, it may be beneficial to heal allies, although that probably isn't the case for enemies. It's an unusual interaction either way. Additionally, though, with the launch of Into the Light, Destiny player numbers are actually performing pretty well again, and D2 is in the top 10 most played games on both Steam and Xbox currently. There are also more Day 1 players, if I'm not mistaken, taken for Into the Light than they were for the launch of Season of the Wish, an actual paid season. So I think anticipation for the final shape, the future of the franchise and the title in general, has certainly improved and players are more excited by Destiny again at the moment. Hopefully that's a trend we will see continue as we head into Final Shape, and it seems entirely possible. For now though, positive news and share your thoughts in the comment section. Another random mention here, but Stock Astronaut on Reddit pointed out, inside of the Whisper mission, the portal that previously showed the Vault of Glass actually displays a different destination now. Obviously, this is a minor Easter egg or perhaps even a teaser. I've got no idea what that could potentially be showing. Let us know down below if you have any thoughts on it, but a minor notable thing that Bungie updated that, and presumably it does have some kind of meaning, and perhaps that will make a little more sense in the future. A last mention though from Bungie Help, and they've said for the intro quest for Destiny 2, there is a step where Guardians have to level up to Guardian rank 5, but at that point in time, players have to head into the Vanguard playlist, and currently that quest is bugged and Vanguard playlists are still greyed out, so Bungie Help have said they are aware of the issue and they're investigating the cause. So if you or any of your friends are perhaps running the new light portion of the game, just something to keep in mind that is sort of gatekeeping a bit of progress at the moment, but it's unintentional and Bungie are aware, so hopefully it's something they'll get fixed shortly. For today though guys, that's everything we have to speak about in the video, so as always, I hope you found this one interesting, and if you have, a rating below really does help us out on the channel. Also let us know in the comment section any thoughts that you have on what we've spoken about today, and general impressions for Into the Light. Otherwise though, cheers for tuning in, and whatever you guys get up to, I hope you have an awesome day. So if the enemies of humanity want war, let's give them war.